Hello and welcome to the only podcast of its kind on the internet for the Quantum Grammar Shoot. I'm your host, Colin Jason, Hyphen Matthew Colin Glass. And in this podcast, I'll talk about a wide variety of topics, which is just me sharing my opinion, mostly through the lens of the wonderful technology known as Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsing Syntax Grammar, i.e. Quantum Grammar. Thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoy it. Why is the grammar so important in a contract, in a written contract? Why is it so important? Why does it matter? Well, if the volition of the contract parties is to be clear and to be understood, to be comprehensive, so that all contract parties have closure and everyone is on the same page, well then, it's fine. It doesn't matter what grammar you use as long as everyone is on board and comprehends it. The issues come in when there is a contract party that has a malicious volition or wants to disrupt the geometric level plane field of contract. They want to disrupt the rule one rule equal that's when the grammar becomes important. I speak about something called judge mechanics. And again, keep in mind, I'm using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble to convey concepts used in quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax grammar. So judge mechanics, basically rule one, rule equal is the bottom line of judge mechanics. So, as a judge, one must get the entire whole story, get closure on the whole thing before passing a judgment. That's rule one, rule equal. If someone decides to ignore something or to say pass judgment based upon what someone else says rather than looking at the evidence for themselves, and coming to closure through their own senses and first-hand knowledge on themselves, that's not a judge. That's an opinion. That's a judge's opinion. That's, that is not fair, so to speak. So if you have a contract party that has malicious intent and disrupts the geometric level playing field of contract, you have someone who is not contracting in a fair, honorable, and graceful manner. That's where the grammar comes in. Because what is one of the first rules of judge mechanics? You have to establish knowledge. And what is a more uh, effective way of establishing whether or not someone has knowledge than to certify whether or not they know what they're saying. That they know the grammar they're using. Do they know the meanings of the words they're using? That's the best way I can put it. Because if you don't have closure on the word meanings that you're using, then you don't know what the hell you're talking about and you have no business being here. You need to get educated if you want a contract at this level. So that's where it comes in with people with malicious intent. Now in the judicial system, in the legal system, the fiction system we'll call it, they use words against the public or the normal, regular, everyday uh, John Doe's or whoever that come in there, they use the words against them. That's why they go to school 
And this is my opinion. This is why they go to school for however many years they go, seven years, to learn this special lingo that's in their club, known as the bar. They're on the same page as the judge and as everyone else in the room, except you. You are not on the same page because you don't have that level of fiction education. And so that's why you have to hire legal representation because you're too stupid to speak for yourself in there. So you got to hire someone and pay them to speak for you because they're educated and you're not. And again, that is right off the bat, a malicious violation of rule one, rule equal and judge mechanics because you're not on the same field as them and they don't want you to be. Henceforth, they also have boxes and planes. They're higher than you. There's a reason that the judge is the third box up, right? So when you get closure on, and, and this is the genius of Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, and the reason why he established this mathematical interface on grammar, why he brought it to the public and he used it, we, because he saw that that was his in, that was the Achilles heel of the system. Because anyone can go out with a little work, well, not a little, a lot of work and research and study and certify what the particles of a word mean. Anyone can go and research the earliest nativity root mean of a particle or a word and establish the roots of where something came from and therefore establish closure on what it really means. So if a contract party is using language to maliciously contract with someone, to force someone into something or to trick them, then it's very easy if you yourself have closure on grammar, it's very easy for you to go in and prove that, that they are maliciously doing that. They either have to admit they are purposely using word games to screw somebody over or they just drop it and leave it be and won't continue anymore rather than admit that they're purposely trying to bilk somebody. And that's pretty much the basis of the whole reason why the grammar is so critical and important and why a mathematical interface on grammar is so potent and useful in these scenarios because when one is a steward of one's grammar and has closure on it then they cannot be controlled by someone else's grammar as a result of the education system, the public education system that we have in place uh, on earth, it appears as though most people have been programmed into thinking that they want the easiest path with least resistance to attain something. Meaning a lot of them think you know, feel entitled, perhaps, that everything should be free. Anything worthwhile should be free. For example, a knowledge construct such as correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar should be free to the public. And might I point out right now that it is. It is. On this YouTube channel, you're on right now, over 300 videos, sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge. Right here free to the public. I invested thousands of hours to create the videos and it's contingent upon you to study it if you want to or to make sense out of it. I'm not here to steer you through it. I've already put my time in and this is my gift to my fellow mankind. It's up to my fellow mankind to use that gift however they wish. I'm not, 
I'm not a spoon feeder. I'm not a nanny. It's up to you uh, as to how you navigate through the information. Of course, I have workshops available for those who wish to request my service of navigating through the knowledge and sharing the knowledge. That involves the sharing of my now space. And in my now space, I don't know about your now space, but my now space has a value to it. And so that's why people come to me for the confidential workshops. But there is nothing contained in the workshops, data-wise, that is not contained on this YouTube channel. Why people come to me is so that they can actually interact with me on a geometric level playing field, ask me questions, and it's much easier for me to explain something to someone, quote unquote, face to face, than it is through a one-sided video or through a comments field. That's why I always push for and offer and suggest those 10 to 15 minute video consultations. And that's why I say, if you're serious, you'll take me up on it. If you're not serious, then you can continue to watch the videos and study at your own pace. As I said in the, in the other video, you know, there's been people watching this channel for one or two years, and they're no closer to getting closure on the grammar than they were when they started. That's up to them. Everyone learns at their own pace. So the question I think is that most new people ask is how do I go about doing this? How, how do I learn to be a steward of my grammar? And the answer to that is all over this YouTube channel and the 300 plus videos as I keep saying over and over again. It comes through research. It comes through time invested in blood, sweat and tears. It comes from willpower and motivation to learn it. And if you don't learn it from me, then it comes, you know, it's down to you to reach out to other people, perhaps, and learn their style or their way of doing things. And I will say this, and I've said it before, I don't think that there is really a one size fits all for this curriculum. That is why I do one on one workshops. That's why I don't do seminars. I mean, if you look at those old Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller seminars, you know, the one that's nine hours long or whatever, think about it. How many people in that seminar do you think got closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar? How many people walked out of that seminar and were able to create a live life claim on the spot and create a document contract postal vessel court venue? How many? My guess would be zero, and it is a guess. Not only because in that nine hour seminar, there's probably, to be generous, maybe 90 minutes of grammar knowledge in that, and the rest is, is something else, first of all. Second of all, knowledge is finite, just like anything else. So when I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one workshop, I'm sharing knowledge, all the knowledge that I have and can pack into it with one individual. I can look at them in the eye and I can see whether or not they're comprehending what I'm saying. I can tell by the way they're acting, their gestures, their expressions, what's gelling, what they're enjoined her with and what isn't. And I, on the moment, in the now space, spontaneously create the workshop around that how they're reacting to it, their kuleana. When you have a room full of people, or more than perhaps two or three people, two I would say, when you get like five, six, seven, eight, nine, a dozen, two dozen, 50, 100, that knowledge is finite. I cannot look in everyone's eyes and see if they get what I'm saying or not. Then it just becomes like a video presentation. I mean, I might as well be a video screen up there for those hundred people because 
I'm not going to be able to tell if everybody's getting it. And not everybody's going to be able to ask me a question or anything like that. Most people don't like to speak up, first of all. And second of all, they just don't have the capacity. Well, I can't say that because I don't know who has the capacity for what. But I don't have the capacity to be able to tell if 100 people are getting what I'm laying down to them. Bottom line. So that's why I don't do things like that. And if I were ever to do something like that, I would definitely say that. I would definitely say, you know, this is kind of like me pulling into your driveway with a car. And by the end of this seminar, you know, you're going to see me drive the car. I'm going to show you some of the parts. I'm going to explain how things work. But I don't know if you're going to be able to drive it yourself. I don't know if you're going to know, understand how the parts work. I have no idea. That's up to you. Basically, you are there to see a demonstration of it. But if it's a one-on-one -on -one seminar, then I can make the claim that, yes, you will probably be able to drive the car up and down the street very slowly, forwards and backwards. But you will probably not know why the car works the way it works, what the parts are, why the parts are the way they are. You know, the how will be there at a basic rudimentary level, but the why will not. The why comes through your own study and more workshops or more study of the YouTube channel or whatever. So again, to bring it back to the original question, how do I get this knowledge? It's through study, through will, through motivation, through blood, sweat, and tears, through investing value in it. Because what you invest into a thing is what you get out. The value you put into a thing is what you get out of it. Bottom line. So to close this one out, I'd like to clarify my position on what I guess in nowadays internet social media terms would be called casuals. Uh, casuals meaning maybe in the, in the past they would, would have been called dilettantes. People who are coming in and they're just dabbling, but they're not serious about it. They're just here to have fun. And, you know, there's room for everybody to do whatever they want to do on YouTube or any other social media platform. For me, from my position as a tutor, I'm here for those who are serious. Yes, uh, I do find it some of the topics and, and the way people phrase things as entertaining, for sure. But as a general rule on this channel, I'm not here to play word games. And if an individual is here, uh, perhaps putting up a comment that is not a grammar question, specifically, or they're putting up something that's more of an accusation, or a challenge, then I'm going to come in very quickly and ascertain the volition of the individual. Why are they here? Are they here to promote a product or an ideology that is not congruent with what I'm doing? Are they here to argue, disrupt, or troll? Are they here to discuss something else other than the grammar that they find pertinent or important? If it's any of those things, I will ascertain it. And if it is any of those things, I will tell the individual that this isn't the place for that. 
that if they want to do things like that, there are other channels and venues with which to exercise their uh, proclivities, with which to do whatever they want to do, whether it's discuss conspiracy theories that are important to them or religion or the end of the world or the new world order or aliens or demons or or QAnon or where we go one we go all or this person's the commander and key and king of the post office Vatican blah 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 I mean there lots of other places to go to do that this is not the place for that this is the place for those who want to learn the grammar the grammar and only the grammar this channel and this podcast which is actually an extension of my psyche playlist which you can find on this YouTube channel discusses the grammar for those people who are learning it and those people who are new to it so they can get an idea of me as an individual my type of personality and uh, the way I contract and the way I communicate as I've said in other places you know I don't have to like you in order to contract with you as long as You are honorable as long as you show that you're here to learn the grammar and that you're not here to disrupt or, you know, whatever. You're not an agent, as they say. Then, yeah, I'll I'll teach you. But again, you know, if you're not open to what I'm teaching, then what is the point? Anyone who comes here and comments or anyone who emails me is requesting to board my vessel. It's like someone coming to your door and knocking on your door. Like if I, if I have a sign at the end of my street that says, Grammar Tutor, you know, four houses down to the right. Yeah, I'm advertising Grammar Tutor. And then you come to my door and you knock on my door, you're requesting to board my vessel uh, because... You know there's a grammar tutor here and and you would like to find out what it's all about. You're still boarding a vessel. There are still terms and conditions. You don't just walk into someone's house and if the individual tells you to take your shoes off and you say, ah, no, no, you don't tell me what to do in your house. I'll tell you what to do in your house. I'm keeping my shoes on. Well... You may be keeping your shoes on and they also might get shoved up your ass on your way out. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's how I treat it. If the viewer, and this goes for any contract anywhere, right down to trespassing with the fiction trespassing on, on you as an individual. If the terms and conditions are not comp- are not abided by then there's no contract and if you're not abiding by the terms and conditions or if the fiction isn't abiding by the terms and conditions of your vessel if it's violated rule one rule equal peace neutrality honor and grace then those contracts are off the table and whatever happens happens and we will all do what we have to do for the protection and safeguard of our construct and our vessels. That's the best way I can put it. So that's my position with regards to people who comment, uh, you know, we call them casuals, that, you know, chime in with an interesting comment here and there about it's kind of ambiguous. I just don't really respond to them normally, or I'll ask for closure on them, which of course cannot ever be given because it's an opinion. And then I find out whether they're serious about learning the grammar, whether they're a casual. Also, one other thing that was pointed out to me, there are individuals who, there's one individual in particular who comes on the channel, his name is, his first name is Mitchell. 
I'm sorry if I don't recall his last name. But this individual seems like a very nice, kind individual. He's been around the quantum grammar scene for a few years now. I think maybe he, well, I'm not gonna speculate on when he came on the scene, uh, but I remember when he first came on the scene, he was claiming the title of federal postal judge. And then after, I guess, I don't know, coming into contact with in some way, shape or form, the Red Thumb Club or Russell J. Gould, he let go of that title and said that he wasn't a federal postal judge, which is intriguing to me. And I always come back to the story based upon that story that Russell has told about the 16 year old kid who went into court claiming federal postal judge. It's kind of a contradiction, don't you think? I think for safety reasons, it's probably a good idea to study. It's always a good idea to study and 15 years of study is definitely uh, a blessing to be able to do that. But do I think that in order to be what's called a federal postal judge, it takes 15 years for every single individual? No, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. If that's what you, if that's what you want to do, I mean, who gave Russell and David the authority? Who certified them to be federal postal judges? Did they study for 15 years? I highly doubt it. To me, it just appears as they walked into a venue and just learned as they went. And that option is open to everyone. Any, in any case, the, the Mitchell fellow, he will comment on correct, with using his knowledge level of correct sentence structure. And I take the time to tell him over and over again, this is the sequencing of positionals. I give him a continuance of the evidence. I give him sources, uh, not only from Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, but also from my own videos explaining not only how it works, but why it works the way it works. But yet he continues and kind of just keeps doing what he's doing. Which is cool with me, you know, like I said, he seems like a really nice guy. And for some reason, you know, he just does what he does. And so I've pretty much stayed away, you know, people like that who will leave comments making their best attempts at correct sentence structure as students, I've stopped correcting every single one of them. I just leave it on there because I'm very grateful for the viewership and their, for their participation uh, in the comments field because a lot of people don't have the guts to do that, to put themselves out there like that. And that, as far as that Mitchell guy goes, I have offered multiple times to do a consultation with him. Uh, but he never responds back. Like he's contacted me a couple times, like on behalf of someone else and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, he never takes me up on a consultation. But again, you know, I'm grateful for his viewership and he seems like a nice guy. I don't know where I'm going with that. And anyways, talking about the casuals and my volition with the casuals, it's my volition to concentrate on those who are serious the serious learners, the serious students, and I can tell who that is just by the phrasing of their questions. And also by the ones who email me and take me up on the video consultation offer. Well, I hope everybody is uh, safe out there. Seems to be a winter storm coming through in certain parts of the country of uh, what we call North America. So I hope everybody is uh, safe and warm. Have a good one. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture 
for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.